Let's have a look at how to use the runt trigger now and to do that we'll have a look at this square wave as well. A runt trigger depends on a level in a waveform that sits in between two other levels. So this a sample of a square wave that you're looking at now is just a normal square wave but you can see that every second rise does not go all the way to the top but at some level in between. That level in between is not really important it can be anywhere but uh, I've programmed it to be say around here so that then we can use this level to trigger the oscilloscope. So let's have a look at how that works. I'm going to start with auto and see what the oscilloscope does and you can see that it's not really able to calibrate. I'm going to try the usual tricks, maybe change the time scale. Okay, at this time scale things are a little better. So this this could be useful if I wanted to take measurements. I can just stop the acquisition and then use this snapshot of my waveform to make some measurements like I've, I've got the measurements down here. Or I can try to calibrate the trigger manually. So that's what I'll do. I'll continue the acquisition. So back to run mode. And let's change the time scale to this so that we've got like a, an unstable waveform on the screen. Now before I go in and fiddle around with the trigger, I just want to remove a couple of the statistics down there. They're very useful and uh, also perhaps distracting. So I'm going to clear. Uh, item 5, item 4, and I'm going to keep the other three. All right. So let's go to trigger now. I'm going to bring up the menu for trigger and change the type to run. Okay, so we already had a reaction from the oscilloscope. It's still not stable, but it's okay. Uh, we're going to fix that and work on this. So the runt trigger type gives us a few options to try out. So we can try out the polarity. Uh, we've got two options for the polarity, either this one or this one, the negative. So when, at the moment, because, I'm just going to stop for a second, because the runt trigger goes up like that instead of down, I'm going to use this polarity, the positive polarity. The qualifier allows me to set maximum and minimum voltage levels and then whether I'd like the trigger to be detected uh, when it's above or, or below or within a range of voltages. Uh, I'll leave it aside for now and come back to this in a minute. And then the uh, vertical or this menu here allows me to configure the runt level trigger. So the top one for example you may be able to see this, if not, I'll can you take a snapshot so that I can, I can include this in the video. All right, so you can see this a solid line right above this tiny runt trigger waveform. So what this menu option says is that the uh, runt trigger must be below this voltage of that is represented by the white line, the unbroken white line. And the next one down here, the, the menu item in the middle, something similar, but now the white line is below the top end of the runt trigger voltage. It's around here. And as long as the runt uh, voltage is not below that, then that trigger will be detected. And there's also the last one, this one here, it's got two white lines. This allows you to calibrate and set a maximum and minimum voltage within which the yellow line that represents the top of the runt trigger voltage should be. All right, so I'll demonstrate that. And I believe that's, let me go for the first one for now to close this menu. And uh, these are the available menu items. Let's go back to run mode. And let's try out to set the vertical top trigger. And you can probably see there's a T1 and a T2 indicators which say that the 
the two runt trigger voltage levels are outside the top and bottom edge of the screen. So let's try and calibrate them. So here I'm turning the trigger knob and you can see up here that I've got the T1 indicator, trigger one indicator coming along. It tells me exactly what it is. And here is the level that I'm looking at. So I'm going to put it right there for this one. Press the button to switch to T2. Okay, and now it's coming up. Move that up around here, and there we go. We've got the trigger set with these two little changes. So I've set T1 to be above uh, above the maximum. There's a very tiny faint line here which indicates that the runt trigger level overshoots a little bit. Uh, it goes above the uh, the thick yellow line a little bit more. And I want to make sure that T1 is above the top edge of this overshoot voltage like that. The bottom end doesn't matter so much, or T2 I should say, it doesn't matter so much because it's quite clean. There's no uh, overshoots or other issues there. That is a little tricky to see it, uh, to see this detail here. Another thing that I can do is to take the cursor in order to exemplify this, make it a little bit more obvious. Take the cursor, I'm going to use the manual cursor for now, and I'm just going to place the cursor right there so that the, the white line of cursor A indicates the top edge of this overshoot voltage like that. And I've placed T1 slightly above the white line, the manually positioned cursor. So the uh, the trigger is still running, it's still green, so the signal that I'm looking at now is live as it's produced by the ESP32. I haven't captured it, I haven't stopped it. So this one is stopped and you can see that it's solid and it's not moving and now it's back into running mode. So that's that's an interesting thing to notice. Uh, so uh, that's how you can calibrate the runt trigger. Another thing that I can do here with the runt type trigger is to set this qualifier. So this qualifier uh, allows me to calibrate the runt not in terms of voltage but in terms of the width how long this signal should be at this level for how many milliseconds or for how many uh, nanoseconds etc so if i want to get the oscilloscope to only trigger itself on the runt trigger when the size of this uh, trigger signal is a certain amount below above or within then i can calibrate it this way so let's give it a go first i want to clean things up a little i'm going to remove actually i'm going to keep the triggers because actually i need them so let's go back into the menu and go into the qualifier and let's say i want to use this qualifier i want to trigger the oscilloscope when the uh, the width of the runt trigger is a certain amount. As soon as I did that, you can see that I'm out of calibration and the signal is not stable anymore. So I need to figure out, or I need to measure somehow how wide that level is. So I'm going to stop the, the instrument, just take a snapshot of my signal and use my cursors to measure how wide that is. And as I'm measuring, I'm going to take notes. All right, so let's go to cursors. And I'm going to use the X cursor. And I'm going to position one cursor on one end. So around here, I don't need to be too precise about this. I want a range of values, not too much precision here. And the other cursor will go there. 
So I want to know approximately how wide this is. And then I'll tell my oscilloscope to look for a round trigger that has a smaller width than the current width. So the width here is 1.2 milliseconds, right? From, from here to here. I'm gonna write it down. So 1.2 milliseconds. Uh, let's have a look at an alternative. What about the minimum? I would like this to be, if I go for the option which allows me to, to calibrate an above or below uh, width, then let's say that this would be the minimum. So min would be uh, 700 microseconds. And the max is what I've got here. I'll make it, I'll make this the max. Let's do that again. So the max will be between this and that. Yeah, 1.240 milliseconds. So I'm going to now calibrate my oscilloscope so that it will look for this level. So this level signal that lasts between this number and this number uh, in terms of width and that it sits between the two triggers that I've mentioned earlier. So it will be a very precise triggering uh, specification. All right, let's go back to the trigger and I've got my qualifier to be less than and greater than. Okay. Then my upper limit. Uh, would be 1.2 milliseconds. So you can see I've got this symbol here, which indicates that instead of using this knob, which takes a very long time to get to the number that I want, I can use this knob here, which is much faster. So let's set that to um, 1.2 milliseconds. Now I went a bit too far. Oops. There you go, 1.2 milliseconds uh, for the upper limit, and then the lower limit will be 700 milliseconds. So let's calibrate that. So that, move it upwards. Oops, over short. Okay, there you go. Some oscilloscopes have got a, a numerical panel that you can punch these numbers in, uh, but that's okay. All right, there we go. So let's go back live now and see if we actually have a good trigger. Perfect, there you go. So now we've got a very stable trigger, uh, which depends on those two uh, maximum and minimum widths for the runt trigger. And of course, we still have our T1 and T2 voltage levels for the trigger. So that's an example of what else you can do with the trigger, uh, which depend on the kind of signal that you want to work with. I just want to remind you that Oscilloscopes typically allow you to work with a variety of signals and each one of those have got their own triggering configuration parameters. And I'm going to go through all of those. Obviously, there's quite a lot of different capabilities and options here. But just keep in mind that if you do have to deal with a particular kind of signal, check out in your oscilloscope's documentation for information on their triggering parameters and uh, options so that you can achieve a perfect trigger every time.